Welcome to a new vlog. I left the door open. That was a mistake, yeah. Are you gonna jump on my pants? If we look correct, don't ask why. It's fine. There is. <gasps> I told you! She scared my rat. Ducky. It's okay, Ducky. It's okay. Freaking mm -hmm. cats. Don't. Oh my god. Oh, they're fighting. Yeah, they're... they're about to have a Lion King esque standoff. Jinx, don't show your belly. That's how you die. Is she, th is she showing her belly? Is that what that is? Not quite. Is this a don't hurt me? Oh my god. Absolute anarchy. Welcome to a new vlog, as I said. Um, it's Hanukkah. It's the first night of Hanukkah. <laughs> Do you like our lights? Do they show up? Does this ruin the color of everything? No. I don't, I don't know. It looks fine to me. Yeah, she's got Christmas lights up because... Uh, it's she Christmas time. Make it brighter. Nothing's happening. Oh, no. <laughs> it's fine. You might be too. How do you do it? Where's the, the sun? Do it work? I don't know. It's fine. I don't think it did. We'll figure that out later. But anyway, this week we're going to read the only Hanukkah book we could find. Every other book on Jewish literature on Amazon is about the Holocaust, except for this one and one that I tried to read that I DNF for personal reasons. So we're going to read the Matzah Ball. Yes. By, I'm assuming her name is going to be Rachel something. <laughs> I'm going to look it up. Uh, Hold on. Jean Melsner. Melsner. Oh my God, that's from Avengers and Odyssey. I it, should say it real quick. And in case you know what Avengers and Odyssey is, I understand that it's focused on the family and that's bad. I didn't know that when I was a kid. So I have lots of nostalgia for Avengers and Odyssey. I genuinely didn't understand the time. So when I think of you, Jean Melsner, my heart does sing, but I know better now. Anyway, we're going to read The Matzo Ball by Jean Elsner. Yes, and other than that, this week I am planning on reading um, My Favorite Half-Night Stand by Christina Lauren. I'm probably not liking it very much. Yeah, I am going to finish. I can just look at my library. Look at that. I have my phone. I'm so professional. I'm <laughs> going to finish this stand-in. I'm going to finish For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. And I'm going to read some of Where Dreams to Send by Jan Janella Angelis. I'm going to read this book that's right here. Hold on. Oh my god. You forgot I to have, mention the, like, the other thing. I have my act together. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to read this because I bought this on discount and I'm hoping that I like it because I have a pretty hard cover. I think this is like Phantom of the Opera. What was the other thing? Pack of Bones. <sighs> what a horrible Hanukkah gift. Yeah, I didn't ask for it. See you next clip.
What I love the most is that I can never get a non-crooked angle. That's pretty cool. And all the negative space above my head, I love it. This is exactly what I wanted. And I feel like the phone is falling. <laughs> can I get it right? That'll do. Ooh, don't, Wookie. Here, how about you go on my shoulder? Mama's got to talk about books. Don't you understand? Good news, I finished for your own, ah, ow. I finished for your own good by Samantha Downing. <laughs> Here's the bad news. I didn't like it very much. I don't think it was bad. I think it was boring. <laughs> the basic premise is there's a teacher named Teddy who, he kind of makes me think of like Jigsaw from the Saw movies, like the horror movies, because he likes to like punish people to alter their behavior, you know, to make them like better for their own good. Hence the title, ow, ow, you are sabotaging me. Anyway, he's kind of the main character along with a kid named Zach who the teacher doesn't like. He punishes him, ouch, in an effort to make him better because he works at a very posh school and I guess he thinks that the kid is spoiled even though he's really not <laughs> so there was a murder a couple of people are dying and they're trying to figure out who did it that's like the basic premise and obviously Ted Teddy wasn't supposed to be likable that's not the issue the issue is that I found him tedious I tried to look for words to describe it. That is the only one I could think of. He's wildly tedious. Like, he just kind of... Is that a stain on your tail? He just kind of irritated me. Because he obviously had this superiority thing. Obvi like, okay, I get it. He's a bad person. You're not supposed to like him. But again, like, you can make a bad person entertaining. And I just didn't find him entertaining. Because everything... <sighs> I was just irritated. I I hated his superiority. I hated his personality felt like, oh, he was so holier than thou. It just oh, it really grinded my gears. You can't have those treats. I already gave you treats. Zach was okay. He didn't, it didn't feel like he had a personality that I could really have an opinion on. It was just like, whatever. And the plot was long. I, I don't know. It just, it wasn't terribly engaging. It was a little bit in the beginning. And then as it, as it carried on, I just kind of lost interest. But I did finish the whole thing. I, I, I feel like other people might like this book. It felt like a young adult thriller because it had like kind of no teeth. And maybe it was a young adult thriller and I just didn't know. I don't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend it, but I could for sure see other people liking it. Hey, do you see this? Do you see this child? Get over here. Yeah, and I made some progress on the stand-in. I feel bad. I don't have much of an opinion on that one. Kind of bored. I am more than halfway through. I think I'm three quarters in. It just feels like nothing's happening at all it's i was excited for this premise because i thought okay so like typically romances don't have like super heavy premises but this one sounded fun it's just not very fun like it's not executed in a way that i'm having a good time with it the narration is 10 out of 10 i love it i think if it had different narration i just wouldn't like this book at all as it is i'm probably going to give it a three it's perfectly passable I don't necessarily feel like I'm wasting my time. I just don't feel like I'm really getting anything out of it other than like the Pippa Sue, which I love. So I'm going to try and hopefully finish the stand-in maybe tomorrow. If not, uh, I don't know because this week's a little um, not good. The, all the, have you noticed all the weeks have been not good? This whole rat apocalypse thing we're talking about um, really sucks. I'm not having a good time. Sarah's not having a good time. We're trying to, like, you know, get through it as best we can, I guess. But, yeah, so, like, a bit of a week ahead of us. I'm going to try and get some reading done. I just got the matzo ball on Audible. I actually purchased it. 
So I'm going to try and start that and Sarah's going to try and read it and we're going to buddy read it and it's going to be our Hanukkah thing because there's no books really that I could find that were fun Hanukkah books, which is kind of a bummer. You know, as a Jewish girl during Hanukkah, I wish there was more. There really isn't, but you know, maybe it'll change. Like this book just came out. So it stands to reason that other happy Jewish books might come out. They're not all about the Holocaust, hopefully, or things like that. <laughs> I feel bad because my little sister, who's, uh, she's 16, also Jewish. I think I've mentioned this. She wanted to read some Jewish stuff and I don't really have anything to recommend to her. She wants to read the this book, so I'm gonna, I feel like I already said this, I'm gonna vet it for her, make sure it's like, not that I'm worried that it's gonna have stuff in it that's too much for her. She is like almost 17. But, you know, big sister. So I, I'm, I'm hoping I like it so I can give her a copy because it just is really sad growing up, not having representation, which I'm sure a ton of you, if there's a ton of you that are even watching, understand. Obviously, this is a worse issue for people of color. I'm not, please don't think I'm trying to like compare it necessarily, but... I'm just sad that my little sister is bummed that she can't find more Jewish books. Do you want more rat content? Hold on. Let me do a flash of rat. That's my baby wicket. She's got her fur. And then one for Wookie. Wookie, do you want to say goodbye to the people? Do you want to say goodbye to the people? Do you want to say goodbye? You're running. Come on. Do you want to say goodbye? Goodbye. Oh my God. You're so beautiful. Oh, you're so, you're both of you. You're so beautiful. You're my baby. Oh. So it is Monday. And I am reading. Yes, I'm reading. I'm getting my, my act together. Uh, I started the Mott's Ball, as we said we were due. I don't know if Kathy started it yet. Uh, I am interested to see what she thinks of it. Just because, like, the the opening is, like, <laughs> it's funny. But, uh, yeah, just to clarify, I am not Jewish, but Kathy is. So, I'm just joining her because... Because I can. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll update you a little bit later. Alright, so, um, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, oh, I don't know, three chapters in, something like that? And, like, I don't mind it, because it's just a silly romance, but, so, like, the publishers that she's working with are cartoonishly evil. <laughs> It's not evil, like, it's just bad. Like, they're just telling her, oh, you have to write a Jewish book because everyone loves... I'm not gonna say it, because, like... Mm. <laughs> everyone loves that kind of thing. She's just like, that's um, historically very inaccurate. But also, they were just like, if you don't write us a Hanukkah book, we'll fire you. Which, contractually, can't happen. She's under contract, they have to live with her, first of all. And second of all, um, you can get sued. You fire a Jewish person for not being Jewish enough. <laughs> oh my god. She could own that publishing house. <laughs>
dark here like early it's 7 30 and like you might not think that's like too late for it to be dark but it, in the summer the sun comes out at five so it's it's weirdly dark in the because that the light is fucking with the camera anyway <clears throat> so i'm a little bit further into the monster ball i'm not really enjoying it it's okay like it's fine uh I, I'm interested to see what Cappy thinks because basically this entire romance is like a second chance romance, I guess. But the entire romance is like the reason it fell apart. It, it's going to be a miscommunication. So this entire book is about a miscommunication trope. <laughs> and I'm just not, I don't know. I don't know about that. So we'll see what Cappy thinks. I'll, I'll talk about it with her a bit. She hasn't started it yet, I don't think so. Hmm. further into the matzo ball i don't know about this one for me uh she just went to a mall to sit on santa's lap to ask him advice this adult woman sitting on a strange man's lap and treating him like a therapist while there's actual little children waiting to sit with him like the whole mall santa thing already creeps me out but when you add like adult women sitting in santa's lap I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like it. It was supposed to be funny, but it just came off really cringy. Like, really cringy. Nothing. The matzo ball. Yeah, you want to explain what happened, other than the fact that it's poorly written. Okay. Although it is very um, divisive, doesn't seem like the right word. I suppose I'll take a stand here on the Israeli-Palestinian thing. Um, <laughs> I'm not on the side of slaughtering a whole bunch of people who have absolutely no chance of properly defending themselves. But the author might disagree on that. Uh, if you look on the rev reviews on Goodreads, which I just did, I'm DNFing it because I just perused the Goodreads reviews and I, I saw that in the middle of flirty banter, our lead, Rachel, makes jokes about being a spy for the Israeli forces and killing a whole bunch of people. And like, you know, man, I, mm -mm, that is why we're <laughs> DNFing it, both me and Sarah. Also, it's bad. <laughs> Yeah, I could probably get through the bad if not for that, but yeah. the other problems which I'm seeing other people have with it. I've read, I'm like, I read like four hours. I might, I got pretty far. So I think you got farther than I did. I was listening on fast speed. The issues are, it feels like, and this woman is really Jewish, so I'm surprised she would do this, but it feels like she picked every single stereotype of Jewish culture in America specifically and put it in this because like, Every single conversation anyone has, first of all, is about being Jewish, which makes me feel like what she wanted was for you to not have a second in this book where you're not actively thinking about how they're Jewish, which feels exploitative the way to they me, did it. To me, it felt like a mix of, like, sitcom Jewishness. Yeah. And, um, Jewishness that... Gentiles. Yes, Gentiles, thank you. <laughs> and can understand, like, it felt very, like, doesn't this feel very Fran Drescher? Yeah, except Fran Drescher's charming and... It's not over the top. Mm -hmm. It's like a couple jokes here and there. 
But this, I don't want to be like, oh, it's crammed down your throat that she's Jewish and that's the problem. It's a problem because it, the way they did it felt exploitative. Like, mm -hmm. like they're saying her full name all the time, which is a very Jewish name. Yeah, every, oh my God, that got on my nerves so bad. Every single conversation is something about being Jewish. And I guess it's tricky because with Judaism, it's a religion and it's a culture. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of Jewish people, it's so much a part of them. But like as a person who's been around a whole lot of Jews... Like, for Jewish events, I've been to bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, uh, Passover, like, all kinds of things. The conversations aren't about being Jewish. <laughs> They're about if their kids are successful or not. Which is another thing that annoyed me about this, because she's like... Didn't one of, wasn't one of those bat mitzvahs on our yacht? Mm-hmm. It was the, a party, uh, the party was on a yacht. The, the bar mitzvah was in a temple. But, um... My grandma used to be rich before the economic class of... 2008 mm. but like okay we're gonna play the stereotype game i'm gonna tell you what the actual stereotype is in this friggin book she's a wildly successful author who at the same time being successful apparently if she doesn't write this one book it's gonna ruin her career same with bag of bones <laughs> but she's very successful and her parents don't know because she writes under a pen name she has christmas books and her parents treat christmas like it burned down their farm mm -hmm. and here's the thing her parents would care more that she's successful, that she's writing books about Christmas. She'd just be like, ha, ha, ha. Use, they'd be like, use the Christians to make money and take care of yourself. They would absolutely be more happy that she's successful than that she's doing it with Christmas. This is not a tear your shirt situation, <laughs> which is, do you, is that a wildly known thing? I don't think so. If you know, you know. But in reality, unless her parents, like she says her parents are really loving. Which I'm assuming it's going to come out that she's a writer and they're not going to be as mad as she's assuming. So she's projecting it. But the reality is, like a lot of parents, what they care about is that their kids are successful. And she's a very successful yeah, also, author who's written 20 books. And I'm going to guess at most six years, which is really unrealistic for one. Mm -hmm. Like the, the other part of it that felt like it was written for non-Jewish people is that she has this weird shame not only for being Jewish, but for liking non-Jewish things. Which, yeah. Because, like, okay. You're allowed to exist outside of your culture, guys. <laughs> Kathy and I have been friends for 11 years. She's never once felt shame for liking Christmas trees. <laughs> and, like, my family on my mom's side, real Jew, like, they're really Jewish. But not, like, to a point where they hate Christmas. That's not actually a thing. Yeah. I, it I, just bothered me. Her friend is Jewish, her best friend. And, like, he, she, he walked in on her mom talking to her. And he said something about, oh, she's really good at the Jewish guilt. And it's like, dude, if, you, if you're two Jews talking to each other, you don't say Jewish guilt. You just have an understanding <laughs> of what it is. Like, like didn't my you, mom has never... I don't never, know if I got to that part. That was the beginning. What's that? Was that? One of the first... But my mom, so has, my mom has never pulled... Like, it's weird because she does some things, right? Like, the way, the, the way that her mom guilted her was correct, but then they immediately called her on it. Like, if my mom had pulled a guilt thing on me, I wouldn't look to my brother and say, wow, that Jewish guilt. We would just understand that that's what we deal no, with. No, you'd say that to me. Yeah, because you're not Yeah, Jewish. exactly. You'd say that to me. They want the stereotype that's not even true of, like, for ha like it's a joke, ha-ha, Hanukkah, it's eight nights of presents, but you get, like, school supplies and socks. That's not true. <laughs> if that happens to you, like, there's some parents for Christmas who do that to their kids, and that's the same amount of parents who do that to their kids for Hanukkah. Most parents on Hanukkah don't get their kids socks and school supplies. If that happens, your parents are just jerks. Mm -hmm. Like... <laughs> Also, yeah, her mom's a doc. Was her her dad's a rabbi and her mom's a doctor. If they get you school supplies, you did something wrong. I don't know how much a rabbi makes, but if he's a very famous one who's written books and does talks, he probably makes a decent amount of money, and she for sure does because she's a fertility doctor. Fertility stuff is so expensive. I mean, you never, you never meet a a poor head of religion. No, you don't. Um, and here's the thing, my little sister wanted this book and I was going to give it to her because I didn't like it but then I saw the Palestine stuff and now I kind of don't want her to have uh -huh. it so I I'm not I don't I don't I don't know like if am I going too far am I being too like it, it's just it made me feel gross like don't don't flirt with your your love interest talking about how you're killing Palestinians you know I just watched a video by Princess Weeks about the uh the black characters in Stephen King books and how they're I don't want to say the stereotype because, like, as a white person, it would get taken wrong if I said it. But it's, like, the magical word I can't say. 
and oh. literature. Oh, that there's a there's a joke on about that with Key and Peel, like the magic black person, mm-hmm. and like there's a sketch where he's like in an office building and like the janitor is. It's really good. I'll have to show yeah. you because it's super funny. But I didn't know that was a thing until like recently. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, oh, watching that, that video and We're then so talking. <gasps> Well, watching that video and then talking about this book, it's the same thing except with, like, Jewish... Like, this book is for people who aren't Jewish. That's what it feels like. It feels like... It if you like the who... nanny, you'll like this book. But the, the nanny, this... Like, I haven't seen all of the nanny, but, like, the jokes she makes and stuff, it's stereotypes, but it's one. It's ones that, like, are... Well, there's somewhat... more to it than that, too. Like, there's more to Fran than the fact that she's yeah, Jewish. Yeah, Fran, Fran is an entire person who exists... Love, she loves her culture, but she is more than her culture. Mm-hmm. I'll defend Fran Drescher to my friggin' death. I'd die for her. <laughs> this felt like, you're right, it felt like it was written for people who aren't Jewish. She's like, oh man, I, read, I just read Christmas stuff all the time for Christmas. I'm going to read a Hanukkah book. And it's like, they haven't even talked about Hanukkah. Mm-hmm. She made one joke about the Maccabees. She's like, I felt like a Maccabee looking at only oh, one night that. worth of oil. I remember that because yesterday we were getting oh, wrapping, <laughs> we're getting I wrapping paper. Bought, I regret not buying At Walmart they have eight Maccabees in like a little it's chocolates I should have bought it but what I did buy I should do should I do a Hanukkah haul I mean you can yeah I'll do a Hanukkah haul I bought a little llama who's Jewish and I love him and he doesn't have a name but it's probably going to be like oh it's Mordecai I got my sister a unicorn and his name is Malachi because those are my favorite Jewish names but I love him this is my son he's beautiful and I'm going to put him here and I'm going to put this over here do you hear my knees I do. My pets are very upset with me right now. Dax, because I'm cleaning my bedding and my normal blanket mountain is more like a blanket mountain. She's so upset. She's like, where's the rest of my stuff? And then the dogs put a hole in their bed and all I had was this. Look at it. to tell Sarah that I finished The Stand-In by Lily Chu. Normally I wouldn't have told her, but there was a twist at the end that is interesting. If you don't want to know what it is, skip the rest of this entire clip. But, so uh, this is the one where the premise is the girl looks exactly like a very famous starlet and the starlet hires her to pretend to be her and go out and be seen uh socializing talking to people so that she gets publicity for the broadway show uh or not broadway the the stage play she's doing and these girls look identical and i didn't think anything of it because like sure that's the premise of the book whatever but the book thought that they needed to explain it turns out they are sisters, not twins. They're just, they're just sisters, but they look identical to the point where uh, the main character, can Gracie, can go out and pretend to be this woman, and the scrutinizing eyes of millions of people who see these photos don't notice that it's not her, and yet they're just sisters big little big sister little sister not twins I thought that was weird but you know it is what it is my thoughts on the book overall it was okay like if I could go back in time and use those 10 hours to read something else I would I wasn't impressed the characters felt kind of not very fleshed out not, certainly not memorable the only thing memorable about, about the only thing memorable about it was the narration which was great um <laughs> 
I didn't really, I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. I gave it three stars on Goodreads because they don't do halves. I probably would have gave it like two and a half. The writing wasn't bad and I think it's very palatable, I guess. Uh, not awesome, but I'm going to, I, I have made a ton of progress in Bag of Bones, which is uh, not included in the vlog, but I just wanted to say if I don't read more stuff for this one, it's because I'm reading Stupid Bag of Bones and I hate it. There's probably a, another video about that coming out in a week or two. But yeah, reading Bag of Bones and um, <clears throat> I'm thinking about starting Rivermarked by Patricia Briggs, which I think is the sixth Mercy Thompson book. The other choices I have, I wanted to start Where Dreams Descend, which I don't know the name of the author. Um, I think it's a fan of the opera retelling. I, I was thinking about starting that, but I've been DNFing every single book that I have on my shelf that I haven't read before, and I just don't. <laughs> I don't want to feel like I wasted my money and my time buying all these books because I end up hating all of them, but I'm just telling myself to stop buying away and it won't happen. But yeah, if I don't read the Where Dreams Descend, I might do... There's a romance called Shipped, which I started, but I didn't get very far. And I think I have, I have other choices in my Audible and at my library. So we'll see what happens. It's Wednesday night, 11 o'clock at night. So there's two, three days left in the week. Me and Sarah are homebound because there's a chance we got COVID, which is super cool. I'm so excited. Uh, so we're going to find that out. Um, and then we're going to hopefully be fine and be able to leave the house if we're all clear. But we might be getting a whole lot of reading done in the next uh, few weeks. That's Friday. I didn't read anything this week again. Um, and I'm probably not going to. Basically, it was kind of a bad week. After we decided to DNF the Monster Ball, I just didn't feel like reading. Um, the pilot, uh, my old girl, fun bright sister, unfortunately had me put to sleep because her cancer got pretty bad. And I just didn't feel like reading. So I didn't read. I I love Pilot a lot. She was the run I had the closest bond with. And I don't really know um yesterday. Yeah. Like you know, I don't really know how to process it quite yet, to be honest. So But yeah, that was Wednesday and it's Friday, so I didn't update you yesterday. And uh well, I'm gonna try Oh, I'm sorry, Sailor. I'm gonna try and get some more reading done next week like this little slump it's time for it to end I guess huh? oh it was, it was Heidi it was Heidi who I had for now enjoy Sailor
Welcome to the end of the vlog. Hello, friends. Yes. It's been a long day for Sarah. I cleaned four rat cages, like. <sighs> Do you want to see one of them? Look at Ducky chewing her little hand. <laughs> Look at her. Yep, that's one of the cages I cleaned. Yeah, their babies are enjoying it. They're having a good time. Yeah, they're rocking and rolling. Uh, so I didn't read anything this week. Anything at all? All after I DNF'd. Uh, uh yeah. After we DNF this, it was Wednesday, and then I didn't feel like doing anything. So, but I'm gonna start Dune on probably on Monday. I think I'm thinking I'm gonna start Dune over also mm -hmm. because I wanna like. I feel like I missed a lot of stuff because I was listening on two point speed, so I'm going to listen to 1.5. Okay. But we're going to sort of buddy read that, I guess. Yes, yeah. I'm going to try and actually get through the entire thing this time. <laughs> did you manage to get anything read this week? I did. I, I finished For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing and The Stand In by Lily Chu. And Bag of Bones. And Bag of Bones. That's for a different video, though. <laughs> I didn't talk about the. Was that, that wasn't last week, right? Lily, the, the it stand, was. Was it? I think so. Oh my god, hold on. I actually don't even know anymore, y'all. The 28th all. and December 1st. December 1st was Wednesday. The 28th was... November 28th was Sunday. So no, I should be okay, talking. Okay, yeah, you're fine. Right. But yeah, uh... It's been a hectic... Yeah, I explained to them what happened. Oh. Fun, yeah. Uh, I guess I, I already said my feelings <laughs> on the stand-in and uh, the Samantha Downing book. They were fine. Mm -hmm. I don't... I don't <laughs> love either of them. I wouldn't read either of them again. Uh, wouldn't read Bag of Bones again. Not having a great reading week. Not really finding stuff I'm enjoying. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I also DNF'd uh, my favorite Half Night Stand again. <laughs> are you? Is it a forever DNF? Uh, yeah, I think honestly I'm done with Christina Lauren. Lauren. I keep trying to say Christina Henry. I don't like Christina Lauren's books. They don't I, like... I might de uh, unhaul a bunch. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you have a bunch? I have like five. Well, you know, I don't... Yeah, I haven't found anything by them that I, that I really like other than the Unhoneymooners. I love that book. But everything else I don't like and everyone else loves them and that's fine. I don't I don't know why. They're like so big Every, and actually everyone I see has very like mixed feelings from book to book. <sighs> I've seen a lot of people have like Christina Lauren as their like they have some of their favorites uh -huh. with the both of them. Do they write anything by themselves? I don't think so. Well, oh, and I, st I started Born Standing Up by Steve Martin, which is a memoir. I really love it so far. He has a whole segment on Disneyland because he worked at Disneyland when he was a kid. So I'll be talking about that next week. But it's really great. And that's the only thing I'm enjoying. <laughs> I'm going to try and read some memoirs. I put a bunch on my library list. So we're going to yeah. see how that goes. Yeah, my only plans for next week are it is Dune because I imagine I'll take most, of the <laughs> most days next week. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe with a, a Hanukkah. Or, oh I'm my sorry, god, with a, a menorah. A menorah emoji. Yeah, do a menorah. Yes. Yeah, or, um, <sighs> what's your favorite, what's your favorite design you've ever seen on a kippa? I've seen cool ones. Okay, so, goodbye. Bye.